Hey everyone, welcome to another lecture of Winter School of Solana. Uh, today we'll be talking about front end for your Solana D app. So this will act as a brief intro on how you can create a simple front end for your Solana program. Uh, we will deploy our program to DevNet and we will use Solana Scaffold uh, on their GitHub repo to kickstart our project. So keep in mind that this is a brief intro. This is pretty complex topic. Uh, it is a whole nother world right now uh, compared to the Solana programs. So we will just cover the basics on how you can set up your, uh, or how you can set up front end for your app easily in just a couple of minutes. And as a demo, we'll be using our banking app we have created in a previous lecture. So uh, essentially, we'll create a simple interface where a user uh, can uh, use the default wallet that he's using in the browser to interact with our program and also with all the associated PDAs with our program. So the basic functionality will be some form of creation of the PDA account, then the creation of the bank itself. Uh, after we have this ready, uh, we will make sure that we will have the ability to list all the banks that are created, which means we'll be essentially fetching all of the PDAs that are associated with our program, and we will display them in our application together with the name of the bank and the current balance of the bank. We will also add a deposit function. So to every bank that is listed in our front end, we will have a deposit button that if the user will click that one, it will deposit 0.1 sol to that particular bank. Uh, in the end, we'll also need to add a withdrawal function. Uh, this withdrawal function will only be able, uh, or only the creator of the bank will be able to call this function which means if he wants to withdraw the money from the bank, he'll click the withdraw button and it will get transferred to his, uh, to his wallet. This will be your homework for this lecture or, your, uh, or essentially your task for this lecture. So we'll implement all this stuff except the withdraw functionality. But from everything you'll see in today's lecture, you'll be able to implement the withdraw functionality on the front end yourself. So please pay attention to the whole thing. Uh, then uh, your task will be adding a withdrawal function to your custom UI. Uh, the ideal thing will be if all of you would deploy your banking app to the DevNet, I'll show you how right away. And after that, you should also deploy your front end to your preferred ho hosting or for example, Vercel and show it off to the world what you've created. So before we start, we will interact with uh, one really interesting re repository from Solana Labs, and that will be the DAP scaffold. This will help us create our application real quick, so it will essentially kickstart your project because all of the wallet interaction logic is already implemented. So we will download the content of this repository or we will clone this repository and we will build on top of that. So what we'll be adding to the scaffold is essentially just modifying the UI a little bit. We'll keep it as it is, but we don't need to add the wallet connector that's already done in the scaffold. But you can obviously create a blank React project and implement all the wallet logic there, but our time is limited here, so we'll use the scaffold. And we will just we will just add a few different components so we can interact with our program. So before we start, let's just jump in. Uh, no more presentation. Let's just go straight uh, to the coding and we will start with cloning this repository. So before we touch any front end, make sure that we will deploy or make sure that you will deploy your program to, for example, DevNet. Uh, the process is really similar to what I have described in the previous lecture about deploying to the local cluster. But in this case, we'll be just deploying to the DevNet. So the, our program will be publicly accessible to all of the wallets that are connected to a DevNet cluster. So we will start with uh, the project that we have created in our previous lecture. And let's jump into the anchor.toml and make sure that in the provider section, 
our cluster is set to DevNet and our wallet is set to dot slash ID dot JSON. JSON. And there is a good reason for the wallet. Uh, we will be creating a new key pair that we will be using to deploy our program. This uh, address will be uh, your program's update authority. So uh, let's just start with creating uh, start with creating our new key pair. We can do that by calling Solana Keygen new, and we need to specify the output for our key pair, which in this case will be just ID JSON. Make sure that you are in your project's root directory, or you can generate your key pair anywhere else, but you just need to specify the path to that uh, key pair you've created here in the anchor.toml. So let's just run the key pair generation. And we have some pub key right here. We can see that ID JSON was created in our project's root directory. And what we're gonna do now is copy our pub key uh, because before we actually run the deployment, uh, we need to be, uh, or we need to have some balance in this particular account that we'll be using for deployment. So uh, we need to run the airdrop. So let's call Solana, Solana airdrop, specify so amount you want to get airdropped to, and also add the uh, wallet pub key or the pub key of the wallet that we have just created. So let's call Solana airdrop one. We can see that we, the, the transaction went through. We have one soul in our account now. Let's airdrop some more. We have two soul, let's airdrop some more. You can see that this, one, this request failed. Uh, do not worry, uh, it sometimes fail. If you have some issues with the airdrop, try to specify a lower amount for your airdrop or try it again later or try it again uh, with different delays between the airdrop your airdrops you're running. So let's airdrop at least three or four soul to our uh, deployment account. So now we have four soul and we are pretty much ready for deployment. Uh, before we actually deploy, uh, let's call anchor build and rebuild our project if everything uh, is fine before we run the actual deployment because you can expect that during the deployment you will spend some of the Solana that you've been airdropped. So this will take some time. So now our build is complete. Uh, everything went through fine and we are pretty much good to go for deployment. So let's call anchor uh, deploy. That essentially just one command will run through the whole deployment process. Just make sure that you have specified that the cluster is DevNet, you have specified the path to your wallet that you will use for the deployment and make sure that that particular wallet has enough Solana in it to actually run through the deployment process. So let's do anchor deploy. Uh, we see we have our upgrade authority here. We have the deploying workspace, which is the RPC that we have in our Solana CLI. CLI. And we can see that we are deploying program Solana PDAs and there is a path to that particular program that we have deploying. Uh, you can see that it is running through the transaction. So uh, let it complete. After the deployment completion, we will get our program ID uh, or ID of the program that it is now re re residing on the DevNet. So now we have finalizing transaction and you can see that our de deploy was successful and we have our program ID that we will use. So uh, if you have some issues with the deployment, make sure that you have enough Solana uh, on your account uh, because it might fail out the down like in the middle of the deployment if you don't have enough Solana for all the transaction to go through. So. If that's your case, run through the airdrop process again or try again a little bit later. So now uh, when our deploy is successful, there is an, another important piece of information that Anchor generates for us uh, during the actual build process. So if you check out the target folder in our uh, projects folder, you can see that there is a IDL folder and the IDL folder is containing one JSON file. That JSON file is really important for you in terms of, uh, in terms of 
uh, front-end development because if you check out your uh, IDL file, it is essentially a map of all the function and all the accounts that your program is using. And also, you can see that there is an address uh, for your deployed program. You can see that the address matches. And you will use this JSON to have a structure of your program on the JavaScript or TypeScript side. So you, uh, your Solana, uh, your JavaScript or TypeScript program has an idea how your actual program on Solana looks and how you will interact with all the different function and how are the different accounts structured. So before we jump into the uh, front end development, make sure to copy this uh, JSON file to, for example, any folder on your computer or because we'll be copying this JSON file into our uh, desktop program. In some of the cases, uh, you want to create a mono repo, which means you will have your front end and also your Solana program inside one repository. In that case, you can create a new React project inside your uh, Solana programs directory. But in our example, we will be using the Solana dApp scaffold. So we will have a separate project for that. So we need to make sure that our IDL file is copied over uh, to the new project we'll be working with. Also make sure to note down your program ID, even though it is mentioned in your, uh, in your IDL file. So now we're in a different project, as you can tell, we are in a dApp scaffold uh, from the Git, rep, Git repository I've mentioned. So let's just uh, start with actually running the project that we have copied from the Git repo. We can do that by running npm install first. This will install all of the dependencies for the project. You can check out the dependencies in the package.json file, but uh, most of you are already JavaScript or TypeScript developers, so you probably know how all this works. I will not go into the detail, but uh, after you're done with the ins installation, uh, we can run the project using npm run dev. So let's just do that and check out how uh, the application looks. So as you can tell, it is uh, really nicely designed. It is essentially uh, ready for you to do a lot of the customization or import or add your programs function so we can modify it as much as we want. This is a great starting point for you. You can also, as you can tell, call npx create Solana dApp. This will create a new, uh, this will create a new dApp sample for you uh, using just one command. So before we continue, let's also make sure that we have Solana Wallet installed in our browser. I believe that most of you already do. In my case, I'll be using Phantom. So let's just log in. So uh, I'm, in the, I'm in the Phantom. As you can tell, I have the uh, Phantom beta, so I have Ethereum here too, but I don't know, it's really up to you. The, the process is uh, pretty much similar to all of the Phantom versions. So you can also see that I'm currently in the test net mode. Uh, I advise you to enter the test, met, test net mode because you can uh, run into some issues. You can do that by jumping into the phantom settings, jumping into uh, developer settings and enabling test net mode here. Uh, this will essentially switch the RPC that your wallet's communicating with to a dev net or test net according to your settings. So let's make sure that our dApp that we are running on the local host right now is connecting to our Phantom wallet. And as you can see, it is uh, currently connected to my wallet here. So uh, you can tell that you have some base, you, you have an uh, option to actually request airdrop. So if we click it, uh, it may fail, but we can try it again and it will request an airdrop to your uh, browser's wallet. Uh, before we actually continue, make sure you have some soul on your, uh, on your uh, wallet in the browser because 
we need to be sure that you have some soul to interact with your actual program. So airdrop at least one or two soul before we go ahead. There is also a basic staff and this is, you can see it is a little bit different for me than to you because I've created this, uh, I've created this sample for our Solana banking program. So you can see the progress that we'll have or our uh, dab at the end should look like this. We will have a create bank button and we will have a fetch banks button. So if I cl click create bank, it will essentially initialize the PDA and create a new uh, bank inside our Solana program. And we also have a fetch banks button. If we click on fetch banks button, this will call our program or essentially just list out all of the PDAs that are associated with our program. So if different user creates different banks, you, will, you should see all of them right here. And with each bank that is uh, associated with our program or with each PDA that is associated with our program, we also have deposit a 0.1 sold to this particular bank account. So if I click this deposit button, it should initialize the transaction that will send 0.1 sol to our PDA for that particular bank. If I click approve, the transaction should went through. So let's just re re refresh this page and call fetch banks again. And as you can see, the bank balance got increased. So this one is showed in Lamports, but it essentially says 0.2 sol. This, there have been two deposits in this particular bank. So let's just go ahead and start uh, with the fact that we'll actually customize this DAP or this DAP template for it to interact with our Anchor program. So let's just quickly start by modifying the basics page or the basics view. So uh, let's rename the basics to Solana Bank app. Let's remove some of these components that we don't need. So we just remove uh, some of this boilerplate code and let's jump back into the into the uh, bank component we have created here so we have a bank component let's rename the component here And what we're going to do here is create our bank component. This bank component will be located uh, in one of the views or one of the pages of the app. So, and inside this bank component, we'll essentially implement all of the stuff we need to interact with our anchor program. So uh, let's remove some of this boilerplate code. So rem remove this on click function. Uh, we can also have this, um, can have yeah, let's remove this function. If we take a look how it looks now, it's just a simple Solana bank app with one button that is currently disabled because the wallet is not connected. So let's just go ahead, leave it like this. And we're going to start with uh, importing one additional package that we need. This additional package is uh, project CRM slash anchor. And we will need this package to interact with the uh, Anchor programs. So let's just shut our project down and call npm install uh, add uh, project serum slash anchor. So this will install all of the packages we need to actually interact with the Anchor program. So we should be good. And let's import some of the stuff that we need to uh, to work with our banking component. So call import and it will be following packages. And we will import it from uh, project CRM slash anchor. So we'll have our program anchor provider vet three utilities BN, which stands for big number and wallet. Uh, we actually, sorry, we don't need wallet for this particular sample. So yeah, this is essentially what we need to import. And one additional thing that we need is the IDL file I have mentioned before. So uh, let's just copy over our IDL file to our, uh, to our uh, front end project. So just copy it here. 
as you can tell, I have our, you can, you can tell my ID, IDL files right here. So we have our Solana PDAs, the instructions that our program have, uh, all of the, all of the accounts and also the address of the deployed program. We are going to need this IDL file because we're going to import it right here. So let's just say import, call it IDL from and the a path to the IDL we have, uh, we have imported. You can obviously put it whatever, wherever you want in your project, but I have it in the same folder as this component. So we have Solana PDAs.json. So yeah, that's pretty much what we need right here. And let's uh, also make sure that the IDL is accessible as a, as a, so, as a JavaScript object. So some of you might run into this issue, but I'm going to handle it directly here. So I'm going to define new constant that I'll call IDL uh, string. Uh, this will be JSON stringify and it will stringify our IIDL and I'll also add const IDL object and we will parse the stringified JSON back in. So let's call JSON parse and our IDL string. This is not completely necessary, but it may, some of, uh, it may solve some of the issues for you when you try to access the IDL or you try to reference it in some of the functions. So I'm going to do it that way. And let's just also, uh, let's just also define program ID. Uh, we're going to need program ID to be defined as a public key. So we can call new, a uh, new public key. And we're going to fetch the public key from the IDL we have imported. So let's just do IDL object. And we need metadata and we need address or actually the uh, ID will actually help you here. If you type in IDL dot metadata dot address. So this is just essentially creating a new public key from the string we're supplying here. And the string we're supplying here is from our Solana PDAs file right here. So that's the address to the program that we have deployed to the DevNet. So now we're pretty much good to go. Uh, let's just go ahead and start with the first function we're going to implement and that is called get provider. And this uh, function will return us an anchor provider or something that we're going to use to interact with our uh, anchor program. Sorry, it doesn't need to be an async function. So let's just create a get provider and we're going to go ahead and create a const provider. And let's just call new anchor provider, which we are importing from project serum slash anchor. And the anchor provider needs to be supplied with some of the important things we need to reference here. So we need the connection. This one is uh, representing the actual connection to the cluster where the program is deployed. That means we're going to need to get this connection from our, uh, from our wallet. But in this particular sample where we're using Solana DAP, we are able to reference the uh, reference the actual connection that is in the top bar where we're connecting the wallet and we're selecting the cluster. We can do that by calling use connection. The use connection, uh, let's import the use connection from the wallet adapter react. So we have use wallet here. Let's just add use connection. And by doing that, we can fetch the current connection settings in all of the components in or all of the pages across the whole project. So this is the first thing that we're actually supplying to our anchor provider. So that's connection. 
the second thing that we need to supply is the wallet or the wallet that will be used to pay and sign all of the transaction that we will be interacting with. So let's just modify uh, our use wallet here. So let's just call it uh, our wallet equals use wallet and we will supply our wallet here. So this will essentially reference the wallet connection that is currently uh, that is cur currently set up in the uh, front end that we're working with. So uh, thanks to the Solana DAP, we have all of this stuff prepared so we can just re reference it. If you want to create the uh, front end from the ground up, you can do that also, but it's a little bit more time consuming. So now we also need to specify, uh, we also need to specify the uh, the last thing, and that is the confirm options that will essentially we can use anchor provider default options. So, but this will essentially tell uh, our provider uh, how we want to know about the transaction that we are uh, we are working with. If we want to have response for the finalized transaction, or if the transactions are pr pr processing, or etc. So now we're pretty much set with our anchor provider and we're just going to do return our provider and we're going to call this get provider function quite often. We'll essentially use it for all the interaction that we'll be doing with our program. But now we're pretty much set with our anchor provider. The another thing that we need is a wrapper or, a, or, or for example, JavaScript function that will be representing some function inside our Solana program. So we can start with the actual bank creation. So that means if we call this JavaScript function, we will use our anchor provider to connect to our program and call the create function inside our Solana program. So let's just call it uh, create bank. Make sure that this function is asynchronous. And what we're going to do here is add a try catch block. So just so we're sure to handle all of the errors that may occur during the actual transaction that we'll be calling here. And the first thing we're going to do is obtain the provider. So let's just say const ank provider. And that one will reference the get provider, which will return uh, the actual anchor provider to us. We also need to create a new program which essentially means we need some form of reference to our actual Solana program residing on a Solana blockchain. So let's just say const program new program. The program is a reference to our program. We're imp we are importing it from project serum slash anchor. And we need to supply a few different things here. We need to supply the IDL, the full IDL. I will supply the IDL object. For those of you who are writing in TypeScript, this is why I've created this uh, JSON string and parse, uh, because some of you might have some issues with referencing the actual IDL object here, but I'm gonna do it like this. I'm gonna reference my IDL object, which is parsed from the IDL JSON. The other, another thing that we need is the actual program ID. In our case, we've defined it up here. So we're creating a new public key from the IDL metadata address. And we need the, the last thing that we need is the anchor provider. So we are having the, we, we are getting the anchor provider here in, at the previous line. So we're just, uh, we just mentioned our anchor provider. So now we're pretty much uh, have a reference to our program on Solana. But we, before we actually going to call our create function in our Solana program, we need to be sure that we have created a new PDA uh, for our bank. And we can do it quite easily. So let's just uh, create a new const. Uh, we'll call it bank. 
and let's just call await public key and now we're going to do find program address sync that will find uh, an address for our uh, or that will find a PDA address from the seats that we will specify here uh, you probably remember that we have specified some form of seats in our Solana program. So let's just jump back into it. Check it out here. So we have our we have our PDA here, and we are using bank account string as a seat, and we are also using an user's public key or the signer public key. Uh, as another seat that we'll use to generate the PDA. So what we're going to do here is we're going to be essentially just saying we want to find the address according to some of the seats that we will supply here. So the first seat that we need to supply is the bank account string. And we can do it by call utilities from the, anch uh, from the project serum anchor package, get the bytes, from the UTF string and call the encode on the string that we want to use, which in our case is bank account. That's the first seat uh, we are using to generate our PDA. The another one is the, is the public key of the user that is actually creating this PDA. And we can do it quite easily. We just call our anchor provider access the wallet and we want the public key to buffer. So now we have specified the two seats that we need, but for the actual PDA creation or actual finding of the PDA, we also need to specify a last important thing and that is the actual program ID that uh, of the program that we have deployed and we can do it by calling uh, we can do it by calling program reference our program and call program ID so what we have done here is we have actually find the address according to the seeds here and according to the program ID uh, or the ID because the the PDA is created from the seats and the program ID. The bump is added automatically here. So we have find our bank account now and we are good to go to call the actual create function in our program because right now we have our bank and we can just supply it as part of the accounts to our context for that particular create function. So let's call the wait program RPC create here we are calling create because it is the function that we want to call in our case it's the create and if we look at the create function we need to supply three different accounts that is the bank pda we have created here we also need the user and we also need to reference the system program and it's pretty straightforward here so the create function have one parameter or one argument. The argument is called name and it is a type of string. So it is the name of the bank we are creating. We are, we are creating. We probably know that from the previous lecture. We have added one parameter and that is the name. And we want to call this parameter right here or we want to supply this param parameter right here. So let's just call Winter School of Solana Bank. Yep, so that's our name for the bank and it's one of the it's just one argument that we need to call the another thing that we need to supply here is all of the accounts that we need to call or, or all of the accounts that we'll be interacting with during the during the execution of this function so let's just create a new object the object will have key account accounts and that will be another object and here we're supplying all of the accounts we have specified in our create context, which is the bank, user and system program. So the first thing we need is the bank. 
the bank, we have find, found our PDA account here using find program address sync. Another one is the user or the signer that will be creating this bank account. And we can access it again using our anchor, anchor provider or anchor provider by calling wallet dash, uh, or, uh, dash public key. It's pretty much the same thing we're calling here. We just don't need it in a buffer, but we are calling it here too to find the PDA for this particular user that's calling the bank creation. So we are supplying the user. And the last thing we need is the system program. So we have system program and we can reference the system programs program ID manually by supplying string or supplying the public key but we can do it by calling web3 dash system program dash program ID. So now we're pretty much, we pretty much called the function inside our Solana program or inside our Solana anchor program. So we are awaiting the confirmation here according to our setup here we are using the default option so it's waiting for the confirmation or for the finalization uh, so if we put something uh, behind the await or behind the actual call let's just call console.log and we're going to call uh, wow new bank was created and Let's just also print out the, the address or the PDA of that particular bank. So let's say bank dot to string. So that will print out the address of our PDA account here. So we have this. And in case any of this fails or there is some issue during the execution, we can catch it in the, in the catch block. So I'm just going to do a pretty simple uh error while while creating the bank so we can do it like, like this and we are good to go with our create bank function so that's good news so we have our create bank let's just run through it again we are getting our anchor provider we are creating a reference to our program by supplying the idl of the program we're calling the program id and setting up the anchor provider for this reference. Before we can before we can call the create function, we need to find the address for our PDA, and we can do that by calling public key dot find program address sync, and it will find a particular PDA for that specific program ID and the supply seats. Please make sure that these seats match the actual seats we have specified inside the anchor program. Uh, otherwise, you won't be able to match them. So after we have found the bank account, we need that bank account address to supply it for the accounts for our actual create function. We can call the create function using program uh, RPC create. We are supplying the name of the bank and we're also supplying all of the accounts that we're going to use during this function's execution uh, inside our context. If you have any issues remembering what ac accounts you need to supply, you need to refer back to your uh, Solana program source code, or you can jump into the uh, IDL file and you, you can review all of this stuff here. So you can see we have bank user system program and one argument called name. So we have argument here and all of the accounts here. So this will call the actual execution of the function. And after that execution is complete, we are just printing out into the console. Wow, we have created a new bank and we're also printing out the uh, PDA for our bank. In case something happens during the execution, we can catch it in the catch block. So yeah, we have successfully uh, created uh, a create bank function. So let's just go ahead and implement some more. Uh, there's another important feature that we need to have in our UI, and that is the list of all the banks that are created. 
So what this function will do is essentially find all of the PDAs that are associated with our program. And after it found all of these addresses, we need to fetch the contents of these accounts, or at least we need to know what's the name of the bank. We need to know what's the balance of the actual bank. And we can also optionally fetch the owner's address for each PDA. So let's just go ahead and create uh, our uh, fetch or, or get banks function. We can call it get banks. And the process is extremely similar. So it will be an ASIC method. And we're going to, yet again, start uh, with obtaining our anchor provider. By calling get provider. So we have our anchor provider. And we also can just copy the reference for our program. It's really up to you how we're going to structure, structure it. But I'm just going to copy it right here. And let's create another try catch block so we can handle different exceptions. And we're going to start by calling promise all uh, because we'll be chaining out promises here. Now the first one is uh, calling the connection, not the anchor, but the actual connection. And we're going to not the anchor connection, but the connection that we have uh, in our UI. So, and we gonna call get program account uh, for a specific program ID, which in our case is the program ID we have right here, or we have loading up from the IDL. And this function will essentially return the array of all the accounts that are associated with our program ID. So what we're going to do with this array, uh, let's just map it so we can work with all of the, oh, yep. so we can, so we can work with each of the items separately. So we have a map, let's create an async function here again, and we're going to call bank. So we have reference to all of the, uh, all of the items that are in the returned array. Let me fix up the typo here. Yep. Uh, so now uh, we have the array of our uh, of the accounts associated with our program ID and what we want to do with each of the account we want to call another await function because uh, we have a reference to the to all of the accounts but we need to fetch more info from that account so what we can do here is call program dash account bank comma fetch and we're going to fetch the data for that specific account or in this case we're going to be fetching data for all the accounts that have been returned uh, or found for our program id so we want to fetch the data for what we want to fetch the data for the pub key of each bank so we can call bank.pubkey So yeah, that's essentially our function here. Uh, what, we go, what, what we're going, uh, doing here is fetching all of the accounts and then uh, running through all of them and fetching the data of each of, each of these accounts that have been returned. So after all this promise is complete, uh, let's just print them out into the console. So we can call then, uh, have a reference to the bank. Uh, so for each, uh, sorry, we can call it banks, probably better. And what we're going to do with the banks here, we're just going to 
plug it out into the console for now but we probably want to display it on a ui level so i'll just handle the error first so we're just going to lock uh, error while getting the banks in case this one fails out but what we want to do here is not just log it into our console we probably want to uh, display it on a ui level so uh, in our return function function so let's just uh, create a new state we're gonna call it we're gonna call it banks set banks use state and let's just set the banks to the array array we are getting here so that means set banks to banks so yeah uh, we have uh, we have our create bank we have our get banks where we are getting all of the accounts associated with our program ID after that for each uh, account or for each PDA, we are fetching the data from that particular account so we can read the name, the balance, the owner. After we have all of these requests done and we have all of the necessary data for each of the accounts, we are sending it to our uh, bank state that we're gonna render out or we're gonna render out this array in our return function. So that's pretty much it for the get banks of uh, function the last thing we're gonna need or sorry we have so oh, sorry I made a typo here make sure you specify it's gonna be an array or a type of an array so we should be good now so the last thing that we need we need some uh, way to actually deposit the money to all of the banks uh, that our program have or all the banks uh, that are available for our program So let's continuing uh, implementing the last function that we need in our case and that is depositing some Solana in our bank So let's just start calling it deposit bank which will be another asynchronous function and what we're going to do here is essentially the same process we have done uh, during the bank's creation but right now we're going to just uh, instead of calling the create function we're going to call the deposit function uh, for that we're going to need a public key argument this one will be the pda of the bank where we're going to deposit because uh, it is expected to be supplied as one of the accounts for our deposit function. But the process here is extremely similar. So we're just gonna create another try catch block and we can pretty much copy what we have implemented in the create bank. We're gonna need the anchor provider and we're gonna need the program again. So here we're not creating any of the PDAs, so we can just go straight ahead and call the deposit function. And the structure is the same. We're just going to call await program the uh, uh, program RPC, uh, and instead of calling create, we're going to uh, we're going to call deposit. So await program RPC deposit. And there are some arguments for our deposit function, just like for create function. So we can just go ahead and reference our IDL file and we can find our deposit function. We now know that we need to supply three different accounts. The first account is the bank. The second account, second account is the user. And the third one is the system program. So the bank will just be the public key of the bank that uh, or, or the or the public key of the PDA where we're going to actually deposit the money. And also there is one argument we need to supply and that argument is an unsigned 64 bit integer amount uh, or the amount that we want to deposit, which in this case is in Lamport. So we're going to do it right here. 
we need to pass that one argument and we can do it by calling new bn which is the big number uh, we are importing that from uh, from the uh, from the uh, project serum anchor library and here we can specify uh, how much uh, how much uh, solana we want to transfer so let's just say we want to transfer uh, dot one solana and uh, be aware that our argument is in LAN ports. So we need to say 0 0.1 and we need to multiply it by LAN ports per Solana. And we can do it manually or we can reference Web3 LAN ports per Sol. So by doing that, we are specifying the first argument and the first argument is the amount that we want to deposit which is hard-coded for 0 0.1 sol right now, but you can obviously customize it as much as you want. And the progress is the same as with the creation. Right now, we need to supply uh, the accounts. So we will create an uh, object. This object will contain another object called accounts. And this object will contain all of the accounts we need to specify uh, for this function to execute. So the first one is the bank, which will be the public key or the parameter for our function here. It's the public key for the PDA where we depositing it, where we depositing. So we have public key bank. Another one, it's the user. And here the process is exactly the same. We need the public key of the user and we need the reference to the system program ID. So let's just copy it right here and we're good to go. So let's just print out some uh, lock to the console. Let's just say deposit done. And to what bank? It's the public key, so that's the address of the PDA. And in case we have some issues, let's just handle it, handle it for now by showing error, error while depositing it. Depositing it. We can just we can switch it to error, so it is uh, visible in the console. And yeah, essentially now our logic or all the functions that we need to interact with our program is pretty much done. So now we just need to customize the interface uh, that we're gonna to present to the user. So let's just run it back a little bit. Uh, we have the first one that we've created is the provider. This one is specifying the anchor provider. The anchor provider needs to know some particular in information to actually connect to the cluster and interact with the program. So we need to supply three things. We need to supply the reference to the connection. In this case, where we're using the Solana scaffold, we can use the use connection function or use connection reference. We also need to reference the user's wallet connection, which is the connection to the, uh, to the wallet or to the browser extension, to put it simply. So we can call use wallet here. So we are just passing the reference to use wallet. And we also need to specify the network and the wallet. Uh, uh, we also need to specify the default options for the confirmation. So we're doing it by supplying anchor provider uh, dash default options, but we can customize it as much as we want. And after that, we're just returning the provider in this function. The first thing we're doing is to create bank. So we're essentially fetching the provider and we are also creating a reference to our program. The reference to our program can be created by passing the IDL that we have copied over from our anchor project. So it, can, it, it needs to be an IDL object, which is essentially an object created from the JSON that we have passed. We need to specify the program ID. We can do it by uh, by specifying the public key we have created from our IDL. The address is inside the, our IDL as a metadata address. And the last thing we need to have the program reference is setting up the anchor provider. 
So by doing that, we have our provider to communicate with our program, and we also have a reference to our program. In this case, where we are interacting with the PDA, before we actually call the create function here, we need to find the address for our PDA. We can do that by calling find program address sync. To find the PDA, we need to specify two things because we already know how to uh, find the PDA or we know the logic behind it. We need the program ID, which we are supplying as the second parameter. And the first parameter is the array of the seeds that are used to generate the address. In our case, the address was generated from the bank account string and from the public key of the signer or from the wallet of the owner for that particular PDA. That means uh, only one or each wallet can only have one bank because our seed or our seeds relies on the public ID uh, of, of the signer or of the wallet that have found the PDA or created the, ba the bank. We need to find a bank because the bank is one of the accounts that we need to supply to the actual create function. So uh, we can call different function inside our program by calling program.rpc.create. Uh, the first thing that we need to supply is all of the arguments that our function needs. We can reference our IDL. And after that, we need to also reference an object that contains all of the accounts that our uh, function needs to operate. So in this case, it's the bank, it's the bank reference, it's the user or the public key that is calling the anchor provider and the system program reference. So essentially this is how we call the function inside our Solana program. For the get banks, it's even easier. We don't even need to interact a lot with our program. What we're doing here is we are calling the get program accounts. And here we need, just need to supply the program ID. This function will return array of all of the PDAs that are associated with our program because it can find the PDA according to the program ID. After we have our array of all of the PDAs, we are calling program.account.bank.fetch and that one will fetch the data for our bank account. So we have the pub key for all of these PDAs and we need to supply this pub key to the fetch function to actually parse our bank account. After that, we have array of all of the PDAs plus we have all of the uh, data that are stored in these PDAs. So we can access the name, the balance and the owner of the each PDA our program is associated with. After that is complete, the only thing we're doing here is logging out to the console and we're also setting up our bank state to render it out uh, on the UI. And I don't need to uh, re-explain the deposit function or, or the deposit bank function because it's pretty much the similar thing as with the create but instead of create, we're calling deposit. And our first argument is the amount that we want to deposit. So in this case, it's just hard-coded 0.1 sol. So now when we're happy with the implementation, we need to uh, fix up our, uh, our return here or what is actually rendered on the page. So let's just erase the button. I have prepared some examples here. So let's just fix up. Let's just fix up our page here. We're gonna add an empty element here because that one will contain more of the elements or more child elements. And the first thing we need here is the create bank button. So let's just add that one here. And this is essentially just uh, 
a button that says create bank and on click it will call our create bank, bank function. Another button that we want is the fetch banks button. So essentially the same thing. So let's just add it right here. It will say fetch buttons, but instead of calling create bank, it will call get banks uh, function. So after we actually fetch the banks, we now need to display them. So how are we going to display them? Uh, we know we have all of the bank uh, data stored inside our state here. So we need to loop or map this state or this array that is stored in the state, this array that contains all of the uh, all of the uh, PDAs and their associated data we have fetched. We can just put it right here. And we're going to do it by calling, uh, give me a second. Let's just wrap it into an empty element so we can put more element elements here. And let's just do uh, banks dash map. And we're going to map our banks here. And for each bank, sorry, some issues with my keyboard. And for each bank, uh, we're going to do some processing. So in our case, it's going to be, we're going to return a new element. And let's just copy some of the styles over. So I'm going to create a new div here for each bank. So we have a div here and what we're going to print out is, uh, for example, one bank, uh, Here we can access the bank and here we can access all the fields that are stored. Uh, sorry, let's just call it bank. And here we can access all the fields that are stored in each bank account. So uh, we have a name there. Let's just convert it to string. So this will print out the name of all of the banks inside the array. And the other thing that we want to do is adjust the detail and that will be the balance. So instead of printing out the name, we're going to print out the balance. Make sure we're going to also convert it to string because instead it will just print out the object. So that will make no sense. And the last thing that we need for each bank is the deposit button. So I've created the, the, the deposit button in advance. So we can just paste it right here. And it's pretty simple. It's essentially the same button that we have for create and fetch banks. But instead, this one is calling the deposit bank function and also supplying a pop key parameter which is the pub key of the bank that we want to deposit to. So now we're essentially good to go. So let's just format it a little bit. Save it up and try to run it. If we're lucky, we're going to be good to go. If we run the app, the app should look like uh, the app that I showed before. So if we jump into the basics tab, we can see that we have Solana banks and we have two functions that we can call is to create and fetch banks. So I can create a bank, I can approve it and that will create a bank for me. You will have your result in the console and I can also fetch the banks. So I can immediately get all of the PDAs that are associated with my account. Just to test it out, uh, let me switch out or create a new wallet. So let's create a new wallet. I'm going to call it account three. We have a new account. We have some Sol because it's in a test net mode, but let's jump back into our app. Select or connect the wallet again. We're going to call collect to a new wallet that we have just generated. Jump into the basics, fetch the banks. 
you can see that I already have one bank, but I can create another one because I, right now I'm interacting as a different user. So let's just call create bank, approve this one. Let's refresh and fetch the banks again. And you can see I have two banks now. One bank is owned by my previous, previous wallet and the, this, this bank is owned by my new wallet that I have generated right now. So we can just go ahead and switch back up to our first wallet, fetch the banks again and deposit to the bank that was created by a different user. So let's just deposit 0.1 sol, approve it, refresh our app, fetch the banks, and you can see that the PDA uh, for that particular bank received the money and it is showing the balance right now. So this was pretty much the basics, uh, how to create a simple UI for your Solana program. So you're not just uh, limited by creating uh, tests, but you can just deploy to a DevNet at any time, write a really simple UI and test your program that way. Because the really nice thing about it is you can just host your UI to any hosting solution and you can just send it out to a different user for them to test it. Your tasks for this week will be adding the withdraw function. So what I'm going to need from you is you can download the repo that we have creating during this lecture. You can customize it as much as you want. So just add whatever bells and whistles you want uh, and the most important thing is adding a withdraw button to each bank. So essentially create a withdraw function that will with withdraw all of the money from the PDA by calling the withdraw function inside our program. So the implementation is extremely similar to what we have done today. It's essentially just few lines of code change. So you just call the withdraw function and that withdraw function will transfer all of the funds from the PDA account to the owner's account. So do that. I will send out a separate instructions that you can read through, but this is pretty much your task for this week. So thank you guys for joining this week of uh, School of Solana. Uh, I hope you liked it and uh, you understand the basics of creation uh, of front-end for your Solana programs. Uh, please don't forget to submit your task until the end of uh, Sunday this week. And in the next week, we'll talk a little bit about security in Solana programs or Solana anchor programs. And we also start working on our uh, final assignment, which will be your project. So you will develop your own project from start to finish, including the Solana program and the front end for your program. So thank you guys again and see you next week.